All right. Now, we were going to unbox this yesterday, but when I checked it, it was probably around 120 degrees inside. So, we waited till today. So, here's the thing. Let's take the top off. And let's feel it here. Oh, yeah. Much better. It's cooled down quite considerably. So, first, we're going to take the center section out. Because we're going to bust this thing into three pieces. Because I don't want to try to carry it all as one piece. Alright, we got it in three pieces. So, now what I'll do is I will break it out of the pieces and show you the end result of the casting. Alright. All right, I got everything busted out of the mold. And I must say, I'm very happy with it. Came out very nice. Okay. The inside chamber came out very well. And this is the pass-through chamber from the bell down to the uh, exhaust stack. My ash chamber. My void chamber that I'll fill with insulated concrete. And my exhaust right there. Now, I only had two mishaps. And let me show you those. Here are my mishaps. I had a slight void here in the very bottom of the mold. Okay, now I can just mix a little small batch and fill that. Should be okay. It's not really a very important area. Okay, it is sealed on the inside. I just like more support right there. And here's my other mishap. As you see, the inside styrofoam moved just a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I will take this piece down here, okay, just take a side grinder and kind of taper that down some on that bottom step and on this upper piece the middle piece I'll grind that back a little bit just to kind of help it go together now this is how it's gonna look as I put it into the barrel the overall dimensions right now are 11 and a half inches tall, 6 inches wide, and 20 inches long from the front to this back plate. And up here, 18 and a half inches from there to here. This will be completely inside the barrel, and only this bottom section is going to protrude out the back of the barrel. Now, inside, as you can see, it's a nice fit, and right back here is where my ash dump is, so it catches any ashes or any unburnt pellets, they'll drop into the bottom. Now also, If you look down inside, it's pretty good. Once I trim out that one little spot there, it should be fine. Okay? This is how it will basically be set up. You'll have your pellet feed, which this will have an extension tube going up. Four inches. And in here catch and burning uh, insert goes through the through the, the chamber burns comes out the stack this is my bell chamber inside my bell chamber is my stack itself which the outside diameter will be six inches I'm using stovepipe as a form probably just leave it in place inside I have got 
three inch going into the that going into the burner itself I will pour this in the same refractory concrete that I've used for the entire uh, lower body I will wait to pour the actual uh, the actual stack until I get it put together because I'd rather just pour it once right and be done with it well, now I need to move on to the next step all right now we marked opposite sides of the barrel using a wire uh, went around the barrel completely and then divided the wire in half to get each side now this side you got to have a three-quarter inch lip at the bottom because that's where the inside bottom is and then come up 11 and a half inches and I gave myself a little leeway okay just in case all right so that's this side now we'll cut it out let's move around to the other side and here's the back side now the back side only the bottom portion protrudes out so we will cut both of these out and if you're wondering about the holes, we'll, co we'll cover them with uh, metal insulation tape from the inside before I throw in the insulating concrete. Okay. Alright, we got our barrel cut out. Now I sanded that down around there because I was just going to put tape, uh, duct tape over it. Metal duct tape, that is. Now on the bottom here, what I did was I went and sanded this down flush so that the uh, burner sits flush on the bottom but I'm still gonna tape that hole just in case I did that on both sides okay so let's test fit this and see how it looks okay here's my test fitting all right that's the front and that's about how much it'll stick out okay and then here's the back and that's about how much that sticks out now the little gaps that it's got what I'll do is I'll put painters tape along here while I'm filling it from the inside that way nothing will leak out now I'm gonna fill it up to about here with insulated concrete okay so the bottom third of this will be insulated concrete i know that might seem a little excessive but my wife is a little paranoid of fire so <laughs> gotta keep mama happy so now we will move on to the next step all right, we got it all sprayed up in furnace black. About ready to start assembly. All right, I see my video didn't take putting it together. So let me show you what I did. I got three blocks on the bottom, two turn long ways, one across the front. I have got my masonry unit installed, got it mortared together, and you can see where the vent goes out the back. Looking inside, everything's ready to go. Now I'm ready to put the insulating concrete in. All right, we're gonna make some fireproof lightcrete. We're gonna use some Portland cement and some perlite. Now this is some perlite I had left over from an old uh, Dutch bucket setup. 
I get it from an agricultural supply for, I think it's $28 for four cubic feet. So, we're going to fill that, make that, and we're going to fill up to the top of the precast on both sides. Now, we're only going to start out with about a half a bag because we're going to be mixing the perlite with it. Now, something I forgot to mention is if your perlite is dry, go ahead and wet it down. Otherwise, it's going to suck all the water out of your uh, concrete mix. All right, now I mixed my mortar, the Portland cement up, just on a tad on the watery side. Not too bad, though. Now I'm going to add the perlite to it. Alright, this is about what you want your light crate to look like. Okay. It pumps a little bit wetter than a ball. But this way it gets into the nooks and crannies better. But see how you can kind of ball it up a little bit and mound it up? All right, now before I finish pouring the inside of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the holes out on top so that I can line up the bell chamber and the uh, feed stack through the holes in the lid. Now, it's 18 inches across, okay? So what I did was I just made a series of marks at nine inches, okay? just to, until I was pretty sure that I found center, okay? Once I found center, okay, everything's at nine inches, okay? Now what I'll do is I will make a straight line across and I will mark the two holes. All right, we got our circles marked out. Now how I'm going to cut these out is I'm going to use a side grinder, angle grinder, whatever you want to call it. Okay. Now I put on a grinding wheel because what we're going to do is we're going to take the grinder and we are going to walk it along that edge. Okay. Well, now we got the holes cut out. I took the uh, sanding pad, went around here, took off all the sharp edges. Wasn't worried about this one because it's got a pipe coming up through. But they come right out. Works pretty good. All right, now we got the top cut to do this, so here's what we got. I put the bell in place, all right. As you see, you can see where the uh, stack's gonna come up and where the uh, exhaust is gonna go out. Got the bell and I'm gonna fill this sand up to the bottom of the glass plate that's going in here, okay. Now this is my feed, and all it is is four inch uh, exhaust going down to a three inch reducer going into the top of the burn chamber. Now I'll put a catch down there to catch the pellets for burning. I'll show you that in a second there. Now let me show you the how the top fits on, okay? All right, this is how the top fits on. All right, and it's gonna have a ring that goes around here that's, that I can take off, on and off. Now the gap in between here is a little over a quarter inch. And what that allows me to do is put 
a, a fireproof neoprene in between here glass and then another layer of fireproof neoprene just as a padding to protect the glass and that will so you'll be able to see everything up on top now the other thing next thing is I'm going to do the stack now I've got to cut the pieces exactly now what they're going to be is one inch down from the bottom of the glass is going to be the stack now the stack since I'm going to insulate is going to take up most of this spot here so you're not going to really be able to see way down in but you'll be able to see the fire all on top and you can actually cook on top of there if you want I mean the glass that I'm using is the same strength as your uh, eyeless stove so it'd be like a glass top stove but let me move on to the uh, let me get the pieces cut for the stack and we'll start in on that all right now here's how the stack is going to be uh, poured I'm going to pour it in place now we'll pour some in around the bottom just to keep it in place okay the uh, metal tubing on the inside and the out I'm just going to leave in place this one in the center may burn out but the high temperature concrete around it will stay in place all right all right got it poured it started to move just a hair so I put that framing square there just to straighten it back out now next thing we'll do is we'll cut the glass it goes over the hole and we'll install that all right I'm using a fireproof felt around in here and this is a broken piece of fire glass and it more than meets where it needs to go all right then I filled up with sand as level as I can now I'm gonna cap it and once I do that this part is done then I have to move on to ductwork and the fire tray for the pellets just a look down in here as you can see you got a nice gap going all the way around now that piece of exhaust tube there or whatever you want to call it I um, can't think of the correct word right now but uh, it'll probably burn out eventually but the concrete is at least an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half thick on the walls I don't think it's going anywhere and it's the high temp ceramic so let's button this up get the lid and yes, I did a layer of felt on the lid too, just as a extra seal. All right. For today, this is where we're at. Stacks in place, let it cure. All the see, it's all sealed in. It's ready to go. Got the ring in place. Everything is down there. Let, let it cure some more. So this is it for this video. And on the next video, I'll have the pellet tray. Uh, it'll be ducked in. We'll do the first burn. And I will have a complete list with dimensions. Or I'll try to. So please subscribe. I hope you enjoyed this and have a good day. All right.